In this video, I will be going over historical inaccuracies as well as just fun facts about Call of Duty World at War's Vendetta mission, where you play as a sniper roaming the streets of Stalingrad. Now, I'm going to be a nitpicky asshole in this video, that's the point, but just know that I love this game and level so please don't start tweaking over this. So before I begin and start to break down the level, I want to address what this level, Vendetta, is highly inspired by, which is the 2001 movie Enemy at the Gates, which is a highly dramatized and, to be honest, not very historically accurate, but still entertaining movie following the real-life historical figure and sniper Vasily Zaitsev as he fights in the Battle of Stalingrad. And so the game begins with you hiding among a pile of dead Soviet soldiers in a fountain while German troops walk by and spray submachine gun fire into the bodies of your dead and dying comrades. You then crawl up to the edge of the fountain where you find a man with a rifle, Reznov, which he then hands you the rifle saying that his hand is injured and he tells you to pick off Germans using the sound of the bombers flying overhead to hide the sound of your gunfire. As you wait for the bombers to pass, you see a German general pull up in a car and walk into a building. This general is who you will be hunting later in the level, but as the German bombers pass overhead, you use a crack in the fountain to pick off the Germans lounging around, which you can do in 5 shots if you're good enough and you get an achievement for it. In the movie Enemy at the Gates, one of our protagonists hides amongst his dead and dying comrades in a fountain, in which the German soldiers then pass by and spray some machine gun fire into the pile of dead and dying Soviet soldiers. He then crawls to the edge of the fountain and grabs a rifle off a dead body and he finds a another survivor, that being Vasily Zaitsev, also in the fountain, and he hands Vasily the rifle after he says that he knows how to shoot. We see a German general pull up in a car and enter a building, and Vasily uses the crack in the fountain to pick off Germans in five shots while using the sound of exploding bombs and artillery shells to cover the sound of his shots. Does that sound familiar? It's clearly inspired the uh, level of Vendetta in Call of Duty. Also this scene was also pretty funny because the German with the MP40 in this movie literally sees his friends getting picked off and instead of warning the others, he just like drops prone and starts prepping a grenade and gets shot in the face. And obviously, as I talked about the movie scene, it's not exactly one on one, like how Vasily uses the hole in the fountain to shoot out of instead of the larger fracture, but I'm sure you can see the similarities. So, keeping that in mind, if we are supposed to be an alternative version of Vasily Zaitsev in Stalingrad, we should be using a Mosin Nagant with the PEM scope and not the PU scope that we see in both the uh, movie and game, which both get wrong because the PU version of the Mosin really started to be made on a large scale in 1943, which at that point in the Battle of Stalingrad was coming to a conclusion, which means that most snipers in Stalingrad would not have had PU scopes. Uh, speaking of the Mosin that our character and Reznov uses, the bolt on the rifle should be bent. So this uh, straight bolt obviously wouldn't make any sense because then you couldn't work the bolt without the scope getting in the way. The reticle is also wrong and it should look something like this, in which by the way the German side pretty much had the exact same reticle too. Also, since this level is inspired by Enemy at the Gates, in the movie, this fountain sniping scene took place in the Barmley Fountain, which is a real place in Stalingrad. It's also called like the fountain of like the dancing children. It's a pretty iconic picture. Now, I'm not exactly sure if this is supposed to be the same fountain and location. If you look up the fountain, there isn't any dancing children like in the game. And later on in the mission, you hear Reznov call the place that we were at the Red Square, which is also wrong. But maybe he's referring to another location in Stalingrad, um, now called the Square of the Fallen Soldiers. Uh, either way, if it's supposed to be any of those locations, it would be wrong. Because the Fountain of the Dancing Children, the Barmley Fountain, is supposed to be next to the uh, the Grand Stalingrad uh, Station, a big train station. And the Square of the Fallen Soldiers is this huge, way more spacious than we see uh, square. So again, either way, it would be wrong. But I'm guessing it's supposed to be the Barmley Fountain just because that's what was also seen in the movie. But hey, I mean resource limitations, I get it. So I went over the game footage again and it seems like the building where you duel the enemy sniper is supposed to be the Univer Mag department store building, which is a real building in Stalingrad. If this is the case, then the beginning scene in the fountain takes place in the square of the fallen fighters and not the Barmanly fountain. So going back to the intro cutscene, we see Germans wearing field caps that these types specifically should not have existed in 1942 where, you know, this game takes place or this level takes place. But also these Germans should be wearing their steel helmets. Speaking of which, there should not be any sort of insignia on the German helmets at this time. On January 27th of 1940, the tricolor was ordered to be painted over or just not included on future helmets as it added extra steps to the manufacturing process that just wasn't needed as well as made the users stand out more and less camouflaged. 
When it comes to uniform details, I am by no means an expert. I'm sure someone can break down this level and critique everything from the wrong stitchings to the buttons being used. And so in my case, when it comes to uniform details, I will only mention stuff if it's obviously wrong, such as Soviet soldiers having Mosin Nagant ammunition pouches while using a submachine gun. Although, to be fair, maybe the soldier picked up the PPSH. I mean, we don't see him do it, but maybe he did, right? And that's why he has the wrong ammunition pouches. But then we also don't see any spare like magazines on him. So I don't know. I'm just speculating here it's probably just another asset limitation thing or some of the soviet soldiers wearing the completely wrong tunics such as reznov during the battle of stalingrad he should be wearing the m35 tunic and not the m43 one you see him wearing here regarding reznov and his beard at least for this specific mission it's not totally wrong as even though it goes against facial hair and grooming regulations for the red army as well as most militaries at that time that being well, not being allowed to have facial hair. He is in a combat zone. He's in the field. He's in the deadliest battle in human history. He could have been in the city trying to survive for months for all I know. And so him having facial hair may not have been in regs, but it's still believable. Also, this supposed general amongst his just in general terrible uniform has enlisted ranks sewn onto his uniform. I don't know why movies do this, but it cannot be that hard to know that a person can't be enlisted and an officer at the same time. Although to be fair, other movies also do this. This. and here are some egregious examples and i'm sorry just take a like what it, i don't know man anyways moving on another detail would be the massive amount of german planes overhead with four engines are the focke wolf condors and they should not be used like this and especially not on a mass scale and certainly not during the battle of stalingrad uh, speaking of vehicles throughout the game we see a bunch of tiger twos yeah they would not have been used in stalingrad because they were late war tanks in service from 1944 to 45 and also a couple hundred were built right not thousands upon thousands and in this level alone you see like 10 different burnt out tiger twos which is really funny because not only did they time travel back to to the Battle of Stalingrad, but they also got blown up too on mass. The Germans are also using M2 flamethrowers, which is clearly just them borrowing assets from the Pacific Theater portion of the game. And it's pretty obviously wrong that the Germans would not be using American M2 flamethrowers on the Eastern Front. Also, like I said before, I'm being nitpicky. I perfectly understand that lots of these inaccuracies is just due to the lack of resources from the development team. But yeah, the Germans should not be using the M2 flamethrower. If anything, they should be using the Flammenwerfer uh, 30 which is it looks completely different i put a picture up here but it's, it's like a single tank it's it just looks completely different oh and flamethrower tanks do not typically blow up when shot now i'm not saying that they can't blow up like if the leaking fluids came into contact with something that was on fire but shooting the flamethrower tank alone is not enough for the entire tank to just erupt into a big fireball i mean maybe with incendiary bullets but i mean most soldiers would not be carrying around like incendiary bullets right and very few had explosive bullets and the vast majority of soldiers would have been armed with just regular ball ammunition. Another inaccuracy is using the PTRS-41, which is an anti-tank rifle by the way, as just like another regular sniper rifle. It would have been pretty much impossible given the length, weight, and recoil of the thing. Also, as far as I'm aware, there was never a scope designed for the PTRS-41, as I'm sure the recoil alone would have destroyed any mounted scope that could be attached to that thing at that time. I mean, if there was like some kind of prototype for this PTRS-41 with the scope, let me know, but I, as far as I could find, there was nothing like that. The pistol is also gripped like pretty weirdly in this game as well as many other games released around this time period the user almost holds it up directly to their face which do not shoot a pistol like this in real life you'll probably break your nose but again it's just a weird way of holding it it is wrong because you just it's just wrong <laughs> And as for the grenades in this game, it would be more accurate to see more Soviet RGD-33 grenades. I think you see one later on in the campaign, but they should be seen way more often, as well as F1 grenades. Um, I couldn't get a good look, but it seems like we're just using regular American pineapple grenades being passed off as Soviet F1 grenades. And of course, the grenade indicators are wrong. They're showing American grenades. That whatever i mean this is just i'm sure an asset thing <laughs> as for these attack dogs that you run into pretty often throughout the campaign germans did use dogs however they weren't used in the way that you see here that being let loose and just made to run straight towards and bite the enemy instead they were used for more auxiliary roles such as relaying messages detecting things scouting and so forth Overall, the mission was way shorter than I remembered, which is, I mean, it's totally fine because it's really fun. But regardless, I hope you enjoyed the video and please let me know if you want any more. And also, if you have any games that you want me to do historical slash fun facts like video for, hey, please let me know. It does not have to be military related. Uh, by the way, I'm interested in history in general and not just military history. It just so happens to be that most video games set in historical setting tend to revolve around fighting things because, I mean, that's what sells. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, like and sub for more and bye.